And this version too is very mid-rangey. Like I don't have the Eclipse Dragon Aurelian Saul at the top end, which is what a lot of these variants try to do. You have that, you have the Eclipse Dragon Aurelian Saul as an insurance policy. Ooh, Thralls. Okay. We can keep Shivana in this matchup. Fangs, we don't need. You could Mulligan Screeching Dragon if you really wanted to, but I'll keep it. I'm anticipating this deck to be very slow. I'll play Egghead Researcher, probably. The bad thing about this deck is that it's incentivized to main deck Frozen Thrall. And Frozen Thrall, the one mana landmark, if you don't play it like in the first two turns, it's a blank card when you do draw it. It's such, it's developing it isn't worth your time. I suppose if this deck is running triple Desert Naturalist, then Thralls is just a one mana break in case of emergency, get a rock bear type thing. Hmm. Very unlikely for that deck to have a two drop, I think, here. I'm just going to play the Egghead. We'll play it slow. We'll play it for value. We can play Grand Plaza next round into Shivana. Because we're attacking on even turns, baby. And Dragon Guard Lieutenant, you know, killing a 2-3 isn't really that big a deal. The good news is this deck doesn't really care about Ice Shard and things like that. We maybe have to worry about Quicksand. But because our rally is Dragon Guard Lookout... Hmm. Not the egg. Hmm. Hmm. Not the egg. I think this? we're technically supposed to block like this to set this down to 1 HP in case they're trying to set up an Ice Shard here. We at least wipe out the Clockling. Because we take two damage either way. And bada boom. The issue with Grand Plaza is that Desert Naturalist is a pretty big threat. But the good news is that I only have one Grand Plaza in the deck, so if it gets wiped, I don't care. Ooh, are they going to duplicate the Preservarium? I always hate these. Every deck I play has busted voice lines in it. Ice Veil Archer. The good news is that Shivana gets um, one attack when she attacks, so I can just uh, do this and kill the Clockling for safety. Nice. <laughs> one out of 12, chat, we did it. We both got a lot of cards. I turn it like so. Yeah, they're setting something up there. Ah. Uh, so this is tricky. I kind of like Garen here. Because against these slower decks, if you get this rally online, it's really spooky. Like our open attack is so strong from this position. Mm-hmm. Probably Avalanche bl uh, Blighted Ravine here. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But developing Garen ends up being very correct here. Because even though Shivana goes down, Garen gets uh, an open attack. I could even set up Shivana here. Because she gets plus one attack and challenger. So I can just pull whatever to the side. Oh my god, yes. Rewarded. Take 10. That's what makes Grand Plaza so good. Um, I'm going to pass. We can keep the three mana open. Um, makes Concerted Strike a lot easier to cast if we do get it. I love not having to worry about Ruination against these decks. Talia's almost leveled. You can play Talia, duplicate the Frozen Thrall, and then she levels up, right? But her stats are too low. If I had, like, Sharp Sight or something, I'd probably develop the Fangs, if I'm being honest. Could go for Screeching Dragon. Stalking Broodmother's hilarious. Let's do Egghead Researcher first. Oh. That's a dragon. Okay, they did have to Leah. And what do they duplicate? The Ancient Prep? Get a bonus 2-2 in a couple rounds? So when she attacks, it's deal 2. I have to read this card because I've only played against Talia like twice. Deal 2 to my blocker. If it's dead or gone, deal 2 to the enemy Nexus instead. If you have a landmark, do this 2 more times. So she's basically a 9-5 with Overwhelm. So I can Bright Steel Protector my Garen 
if I, let me see, if I Bright Steel Protector Garen, he takes the two, then he takes two and then two again. So then he would be down to one HP and then he'd slap Talia and die. So that wouldn't actually work. I could just use it to, to chump the Talia though, and I'll sacrifice the Egghead Researcher instead. It's a pseudo overwhelm, so. What's the fire breath this time? A soldier should know. Avalanche is terrifying here. No avalanche, nice. Um, so we get a nice open attack here. Uh we can just pull. They are nothing. Yeah, we want them to block. We wanna we want them to block with Lissandra. I could attack, right? I could, uh, no, 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 it's fine if I open attack. Because if they block like that, they need to have stuff. Yep, harsh winds, okay. Hmm. Guiding touch. I suppose I have mana for it. I might as well just do it now. Single, hmm, single. Eh, okay. That's too bad. If we got like Dragon Guard Lookout, I think I'd be happy. We can summon a unit and then single the Lissandra, force them to have another, uh, what's it? Another Frostbite. Um, do I care about Lissandra? They aren't running Trundle. I can always block Talia, I think. No, I'll kill Talia. It's close, because, like, killing Talia here means that, uh, Shreejian Dragon will get wiped by Avalanche or something. Hourglass, nice, nice. So they're just barely holding the line. Almost out of cards. If Majin Bay is playing Soraka Dragons on, on his stream, then it's going to take off. The stonks are going to rise. Because people always play uh, dragons, like I was talking about earlier. They they play dragons to go above things with Rally and Saul, but playing a lower curve mid range dragons to get underneath stuff is also pretty sick. Um, really don't want to take this damage. This is if I got like Dragon Guard Lookout, like the last few turns, we'd be in a much better spot. I can just summon Empyrean though. Probably do Dragon Guard Lieutenant first to see what they do. There's a world where you do like three sisters in tomb so that these go on to the Nexus. Like if the blocker is gone, I think that that's sort of like the idea they want you to do with Talia. Also, I'm in Dragon Guard Lieutenant. They can't avalanche. They wipe their own board. So I just get to I just get to summon all this for free. I got to remember that against this deck, I can just develop for free. Like, seriously. Yeah, another harsh winds or something. And then Shivana goes down at the bottom so that we get the, uh, the dragon stuff going through. Oh, cool. They're just gonna let it go through. And now I can strafing strike against what they develop post combat. And now Garen levels. This is what we've been trying to do for like 800 years. I wasn't expecting that Grand Plaza to stick either. I thought they were having like Desert Naturalist or something. Ooh. So the key to this matchup is going to be, this is actually a pretty hard matchup. Swain TF into dragons. We haven't gotten Dragon Child 1 in a very long time. So I'm pretty excited. But yeah, always, always heartbreaking. As 
Deck hands okay. This is an easy block for me here. They don't really have any good things to cash in with the barrel. And... I can set up Dragon Chow here. Yeah, I can set up uh, Dragon Guard Lieutenant and Dragon Chow, I think. Over Protégé. You could float two mana there if you really wanted to. Gives us a value trade into the 1-1, though. If they Ravenous Flock the Dragon Chow because they're afraid of me uh, proccing it, I'm happy about that, too. Death Lotus? So the, the rough part about this matchup is just that like your big HP doesn't matter because Ravenous Flock is just so efficient and that deck tends to run uh, guillotines. Yeah, see? So the idea is for us to just generate so many, uh, the idea is for us to just generate so many threats that they run out of cards. You could play Garen here if you wanted to, but I have the guiding touch to, to beat Ravenous Flock. Early whispered words is great. Because that connected, the uh, Ravenous Flock doesn't help us anymore. I'm going to play Protégé. Because if they do have Flock or Guillotine, I can single combat to at least level up Shivana. What do you think of Deep now? Deep has been... Pretty meh. Let me see. Because she got plus one... She got Fury, took two damage. Four, five. So she's actually a six, seven right now. So Guiding Touch isn't enough to beat Flock. But I'm going to single combat here in order to make sure Shivana levels up. The next one I draw will be leveled. And the Strafing Strikes are going to help a lot. Deep apparently is like very strong in certain matchups and very weak in others. And that's kind of always been its problem, right? Moving through the metagame and moving through the ladder. So I think they got that Ravenous Flock off the top from the Croaker. So very lucky for them. For king and country. Be nothing left when I'm done. Okay. So this is important. The uh, barrels, they can detonate them on impact. So Garen loses out on a strike. Apart from Scouts and Lee Sin, what's the other bad matchup? Nightfall is surprisingly bad for Deep. In my experience, at least. So that's two copies of Make It Rain Down. Scorched Earth. Uh, okay. Again, the idea is to just run them out of resources. Their Swain is leveled. I'll take the Crescent Strike. Guiding touch is great. Just keep drawing cards. I'll do Bright Steel Protector. We still take the Overwhelm damage, but we offset a little bit of that. Yeah, they might not have had Parley, like if they were forced into Scur into uh, Scorched Earth. I gotta play, I gotta play Shivana actually, so I have Strafing Strike. Because I get Challenger and I get to punish their Swain. Never lost a fair game. Played one. TF goes on to Inviolus Fox. Hold it, partner. To the skies. So they don't want to uh, develop Swain. I can still kill him with the Strafing Strike though, which is nice. So I can just do this. Leviathan, though. I demand satisfaction. Aha. Best 
run while you can. But as I said, this uh this matchup is is a lot harder than it looks on the surface. It just comes down to how many threats can you generate versus uh how many, you know, how much removal do they draw? I wanted them to block. Have it Okay, so this is interesting, right, Ivar? In this matchup, having Twisted Fate in play is better. Because Twisted Fate dying means that they can play another Twisted Fate for red card or gold card. This deck cannot level Twisted Fate. This deck, it's like, I, as all the time I've played Swain Twisted Fate and seen people play Swain Twisted Fate, I've seen Twisted Fate level up three times, right? And so by keeping TF alive, um, they can't play the second one. Um, they get Ravenous Flock here, which they're going to use on Inviolus Vox. So I'm going to wait for them to put that on the stack. And then Guiding Touch. Oh, the pick a card. Okay, so they're out of options. Um, so a little bit of extra fuel is nice for them. But again, we're not in we're not in danger of Twisted Fate burst leveling here. They're trying to fish for Leviathan here, and I'm trying to get Concerted Strike. Been down. Let his knee out. Still got Swain's Ravenous Flock. I'm gonna play Garen here. And so they're doing this so that Shivana dies to Ravenous Flock. Super weird. Oh, baby, holding the Guiding Touch. Yep, so that forces Death's Hand. Um, so this forces Sharp Sight. Now, the thing is, is that it still counts as Injured. So it would be 2 plus 4. So if I Sharp Sight, Pablo still dies. Even though it's only taking away my extra HP I got, I'm still Injured, right? Because I'm not at max HP. So this way, Pablo dies. So now, we can open attack, and we have Dragon Guard Lookout. I'm trying to think if there's anything better. I can play Eclipse Dragon and Screeching Dragon, actually. Because it would get discounted. Or, I go for Crescent Strike. Yeah, we can go for uh, Crescent Strike here. If they have a spell to ping the Nexus, one of our units gets stunned. And if they summon Leviathan, we kill it with Eclipse Dragon. Be in the Rex. They call me a shark. Stalking Broodmother has Scout. Let's go. It doesn't matter if we scout or not. Yeah, it was it was better to play Eclipse Dragon. That's my bad. I thought we got plus one, plus one. I'm still thinking of old Grand Plaza. So I think we're in the clear. You pay. I talk to spirits. It's a viral. Um, so we play Dragon Guard Lookout here. Couldn't you just pull Swain or TF? Um, then the other units wouldn't be able to attack because, uh, because Riptide Rex gets to block. Pull Swain or TF. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right, Danny. I'm, I'm an idiot. Yeah, we attack, kill Swain or TF. You're right. You're absolutely right. We we attack, kill Swain, and then we attack and pull Rex and still get our cake and eat it too. I'm I'm actually trolling today. We want to play Dragon Guard Look Lieutenant. Another day guarding the walls. Witness strength. You are nothing. They're probably setting up like another ravenous flock or something here, which is fine. When an ally with fury kills an enemy for the first time each round. So I actually want to do this to generate another dragon. But if I block like this, then Garen levels and they have to kill Garen. So I want them to spend whatever that last card is. Fortunately, we're just winning the uh, the resource battle. They, they did a really good job surviving the early mid game. But the resource battle is in our favor from here. You cannot stall judgment. 
Also, big shout out to Prismatic Swain. Prismatic leveled up Swain is super cool. Yeah, we're rallying anyways. I think they realized that this attack was kind of int. I I threw last round and, and they're throwing now. It's the story of Platinum. They actually ironically have not procced Swain's stun a single time. Garen does still die to Ravenous Flock, of course, but... Don't worry, I'll spot any danger. Their Twisted Fate's actually 6 out of 9. Very impressive. So yeah, I am gonna pull the TF. <laughs> I was kinda like, they can't level up Twisted Fate, but he's looking kinda scary at 6 out of 9. If, you know, one of these last cards is like Whispered Words or something. Yeah, sad days. If they don't block- oh wait, they just die, right? Well... Okay. They just left. Yeah, when I say can't level TF, I mean to say they don't do it super quick. And they- it's not the main win condition of the deck. It is a little bit more viable than I've been making it out to be. But you have to remember too, that in that situation, if my opponent had to choose between taking three rounds to level up Twisted Fate versus getting a gold card or a red card in order to proc the stun on Swain, having TF die is better for them defensively.